I know normally I have a whole lighting setup and a microphone out of frame. Uh, this is just what we're working with today with the time I've got. A couple of weeks ago, I went out at sunrise to make some photos and I wanted to bring you guys along with me. So uh, I started my day much earlier than I expected since Nora woke up at 2 a.m. after I went to bed at midnight and I was up with her until four when she was ready to go back to bed. So uh, that's when I started my day. That's when I started filming. Uh, yeah, I just kind of took you guys along for the ride that morning. I'll talk through some of the video as well as we go through it, but uh, afterwards we'll, uh, we'll wrap back here. So just start the video. Since I had a couple hours to kill before the sun came up, uh, rather than just going back to sleep and definitely missing my alarm for sunrise, uh, I went ahead and just started my day and drove into town to go to my office. When I got back into large format, I wasn't sure what scanning route I was going to go, uh, but my friends over at Negative Supply offered to send over this entire setup to scan 4x5. Using that with my SL2 and the Sigma 70mm macro lens that I rented, uh, so far I'm really happy with the results, but once I get more time with it, I'll do an entire video on this thing. All of the negatives that I was scanning that morning were all developed with this 20th century camera reel. Uh, they actually sent this to me when they saw my Mod 54 reel had been marking up my negatives, but unfortunately uh, there seems to be marks from this reel on my negatives as well. It's pretty unfortunate, uh, we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. But as the sun came up, I drove out to Leo Petroglyphs, which is a nature preserve and historic site not too far from here. I used to go on these morning photo hikes like this all of the time, especially around sunrise, and it's always just one of my favorite ways to spend the morning, but this has been such a busy summer, especially with the kids out on summer break from school, so I haven't really had a chance to do this much this summer, so it was really nice to just get out there, take my time, and just enjoy it. And sometimes when I go out to shoot photos specifically for a YouTube video, I kind of get in my own way because I look at everything as, well, if I'm not going to love this photo, then it's not worth showing everybody, but I'm trying to break past that and not take everything so serious. I knew I would have a hard time shooting 4x5 out here, not just for the sake of carrying everything around and filming the video myself, but situations like this are tough for me to shoot in because it's hard for me to find a composition I actually like when things are this busy. I didn't want to just rely on throwing everything out of focus in the background and shooting everything wide open at f5.6, so I stopped down the lens to f22 or higher for every photo just to give myself that challenge of not relying on blurring things out as a crutch. But again, just trying to push against it, go out and make photos anyway despite all of the self-doubt and criticism, and just share the process, so that's what we're doing. Of course, all of the film shot in this video was Ilford HP5, I'm sure you're all very shocked, uh, but I do have some Delta 100 that I'm going to shoot in a video soon as well as some Ektachrome 100 and Portrait 160 that I'm going to be shooting side by side. The Chamonix 45 N2 is such a lightweight camera and this Benro tripod and geared head which I'll link down below with an affiliate link if you're interested. Uh, everything is pretty light so I didn't really have any issues just carrying the camera assembled as is. You might notice as I'm exposing some of these frames that I'm holding the dark slide over the film holder as opposed to in front of the lens. Uh, sometimes people use the dark slide to block any stray light from hitting the side of the lens to cause lens flare. Uh, I was mostly concerned about any light creeping in through the light seals uh, when the dark slide is removed. I have a feeling that one of my film holders, based on a couple negatives I have, that there's some sort of slight light leak. Um, and I'm not sure if that's happening just when the film is being exposed and there's no dark slide in there or what, but just to be safe, I was trying to take any precautions I could that morning.
Via Petroglyphs has a really short hiking trail, but it's a really nice trail. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff to see, so if you're ever in the area, be sure to stop by and check it out. Uh, it's pretty mellow, but it's a lot of fun. I'm sure people will be saying, you can't carry your camera like that, that's dangerous, but like, it's fine, I just... It's fine. By the time I got done with the trail, uh, I ended up finding my two favorite compositions of the entire day, and they weren't even on the hiking trail. They were just of this farm right across the road from the petroglyphs. A lot more negative space, a lot simpler to compose and frame everything up. This is much more of my kind of frame. All of these birds on the telephone line were just flying all over the place, and I was basically waiting for them to take off again to shoot a photo. And I shot this at a 30th of a second, and I was hoping that the birds would be small enough in the frame that you wouldn't really see much motion blur, but unfortunately there's still a decent amount there, so it doesn't bother me too much, but I really would have liked if they were a little bit sharper. The last photo I made was of this house and all of the light breaking through the clouds behind it and with the negative space of the road and the yards there and just being able to see the top of the house. Uh, this is probably my favorite photo of the day, although I'm not sure what's causing this slight light on the bottom right corner there you can see. Uh, maybe that's a developing thing, maybe that's a light leak issue, I'm not really sure. Uh, if anybody has any ideas, let me know. But the petroglyphs themselves are these ancient rock carvings, and there's this shelter house over top to protect them from weathering and erosion. There's all kinds of information on them there. It's really interesting to see. And one day, this generation will leave behind their legacy. Things like Barbara, scratch that, Mark was here. Metallica, ACDC, life's just a garden, just dig it. Didn't even get the quote right, but okay. If you're ever in the area, definitely check out Leo Petroglyphs. It's a cool little spot with a pretty mellow hike. But now let's talk about this 20th century camera reel back at the office. Okay, so developing 4x5 and all of the issues I keep having. Um, I developed all of the film that you saw today uh, with the Mod 54 reel rather than the 20th century reel since I had those marks on the first photos I shared. And of course, I still had marks on the edges from the Mod 54. I don't know why I didn't pre-rinse and I was very light with my agitation, but I still got marks on the edge of the negatives. Uh, I talked to the folks at 20th Century Camera about this uh, when I had this issue because again they reached out and sent it out to me for free to test out because I was getting marks on my negatives. Uh, so I was really disappointed when this marked up mine. And I'm not the only one. Uh, before I even got a chance to test this out, I had two friends reach out and let me know that they also had the same issue from this reel. Um, I'm not gonna mention their names in case they don't want that, but one of them does have a YouTube channel. But when I talked to 20th Century Camera about this, um, they gave me some solutions, basically things to do differently next time so that it doesn't happen again. Um, but I did everything per the exact instructions that it came with, and I still got those results. The emulsion side was faced in, just like the instructions say. I agitated the same way the instructions say. Uh, so it was really unfortunate. I liked loading this reel a lot more than the Mod 54. I thought that was a lot easier, but it's just unfortunate that it also marked up my negatives. So uh, I guess my search for, you know, the perfect developing solution or method, uh, that's going to continue at least for now. Not to mention when I was hanging up these negatives to dry, the clip fell from the wire, so my negative dropped with the clip on top of it, taking out a nice big chunk of the emulsion. We absolutely love to see that. But as for the photos themselves, I'm really not happy with the photos. Uh, maybe my, my favorite two would be the last two photos just because, you know, it's the kind of stuff I like shooting in my free time anyway. But it's been a busy couple of weeks, so I haven't had a chance to sit down and, you know, film this portion and talk through some of this stuff. And the entire time, as I've been waiting for time to sit down and do this, I haven't really been sure that I was really wanting to make this video. Not really being happy with the photos, to me, like my initial thought is to just consider all of that a waste. But again, I'm trying to push against that 
and uh, just share the process, whether the results are good or bad. Uh, you know, that's, that's just part of it. So, but I had a really good time making the video. I had a lot of fun filming while I was out there. I had fun cutting the edit together. Um, it's just been a lot of fun. So if you want to see more stuff like this, please let me know in the comments and, uh, I'll be sure to do that, whether the results are good or bad, but that's it for this video. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments, subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, have a good day. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. People do this shit for every video.